Good morning and welcome to worship. You are worshiping with Christus Lutheran Church in Greenville, Wisconsin. I am Pastor Jen Christensen and the musician you are hearing is Bruce Kessner. So again, welcome to one and all wherever you happen to be worshiping this morning. Just a few notes from me as we begin. We will be celebrating Holy Communion as part of our worship together. So if you haven't done so already, now would be a good time to collect all of your communion elements, your bread and wine or grape juice. And then um, Tuesday evenings, we have what we call God's Green Acres here at Christus. So if you are interested in doing some yard work out at the church, you can come out on Tuesdays at after 5 o'clock. Our coordinator, Jim Borowski, will be happy to put you to work. We do have a way for you to sign up online through our Christus website or through the emails that you receive, or they are also posted on Facebook. Uh, otherwise, if you're here at church, you can sign up there as well, or just, again, show up on a Tuesday evening as long as it's not raining. And today begins our school supply drive. Um, <clears throat> we have a list that is in our weekly email that was also again posted to our Facebook page. And so uh, we've been told that the needs are probably going to be double this year. And so uh, we are combining our efforts with those of other area congregations along with the school district to help fill that need. It is a backpack year, I have been told. And so if you are able to contribute a backpack or two or more, uh, please do so as well but there's a school supply list available and I uh, hope that you will be able to contribute to that supplies can be dropped off here at church otherwise there's also a member of our congregation Jenny Caesar who has supplied her information uh, you can drop things off at her home as well and really, really good and exciting news. Uh, we at Christus have been, are the recipients of an Open Doors grant through the ELCA, and these grants were meant to help. Uh, it's an initiative to support ELCA congregations as we seek to meet new people in our community. And so with this grant, we are planning to offer an outdoor COVID-conscious vacation Bible school. And so to that end, come on out, uh, we have these really cool signs that we uh, have had made. And so we have them here at church. And if you would like to have one of these to display in your yard uh, to advertise our Vacation Bible School to help us meet more people in our community, uh, you are welcome to come and pick one up. Call first so we know that you're here. Uh, otherwise, it will be here this morning. So if you want to drop on by the church, um, supplies are limited. So don't miss out on your chance to get yours and uh, help support this wonderful ministry that we'll be doing. And okay, and it will be August 2nd through the 6th. There's a way to sign up on the Christus website as well as through uh, the weekly emails that we send out. And we also are in need of some supplies for that too, so stay tuned for that as time goes by. One of the things that we're gonna need because we're planning for this to be outdoor is if you have a screen tent or a regular larger sized camping tent or a canopy that you would be willing to loan to the church for that week, uh, we would love to hear from you. Please not the one that you've had in your shed for 50 years that smells like musty old mustiness um, but if you have something that you use regularly that you're willing to don't not donate just loan we don't want to keep all these tents we just want to borrow them for a week um, let us know and then later on in our worship service today, we will have a sending blessing for those uh, who are going on the mission trip this year later this week and so look forward to that as part of our service. That's all the notes from me, and so um, at the end of the announcements, we always ask if there are any items uh, that people would like to share, news, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, other good things that have happened, you caught a big fish on your vacation, whatever it is, uh, go ahead and throw that in the comments so that we can celebrate together as a community. With that, let us begin our worship. Church's story brings 
people, called, claimed, and beloved, let us offer up our confession. God of mercy, we confess that we do not always feel holy and blameless before you. We struggle with sin, selfishness, and the temptation to put our own wants before the needs of others. We do not always speak kindly of our neighbor. We do not always love others as you have loved us. Forgive us, Lord. Renew us by your Holy Spirit so that we can reclaim our identity as your beloved children. Give us the courage and the will to do what is just. Help us to rest in your grace. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. In Christ, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. In Christ, you are forgiven. In Christ, you truly are holy and blameless. Receive this glorious inheritance from God, freely and mercifully poured out on us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues with our scripture readings. First, a reading from the first chapter of Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people. 
to the praise of his glory. And now a reading from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? And she replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet, out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I know that it's summer and talk of school is frowned upon, but does anybody remember having to diagram sentences for English or for language arts classes? Aha, we have a hand raised out there. I ask because it's almost obligatory for pastors to point out that the verses that we just read in Ephesians today, they are all one sentence in the original Greek. Meaning, if you found that whole thing hard, a little bit hard to follow in English, which the translators have helpfully broken up into different sentences, just imagine what it would be like to hear it in the Greek. You can change the slide. I found a photo of this passage that was diagrammed here. Don't worry that it's a little bit blurry and hard to read. That's kind of the point. So I say, God bless whoever took the time to do this for us, right? It looks kind of like a hot mess of words and clauses and subordinate clauses, and I think that if you look closely enough, you're going to see some calculus in there too. It looks like chaos. And yet, as my sermon title suggests, there is order in that chaos too. You can take that away now. <laughs> I've often joked that uh, those who wrote the letters that we now have in our New Testament, they could have used an editor, maybe even two, to help refine their message just a little bit. And yet, especially, especially in the case of this reading from Ephesians, it feels like something would get lost if it got edited too much. You get the sense that whoever wrote this was really, really excited about the love of God that we know in Christ Jesus. They had an idea of how to, to convey that, and so they just put pen to paper and let her rip. The words came out tumbling all over one another. Who needs punctuation? Let's ju just get it all written down. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are blessings, and there is chosenness, and there is adoption, and there's glorious grace, redemption, forgiveness, things being lavished upon us, wisdom and grace and power and might and glory and inheritance and so very much more. As one who writes a lot, I've had bursts of writing energy kind of like that, especially, especially when the Holy Spirit is involved, as undoubtedly the Spirit was involved in the writing of this letter to the Ephesians. 
the words are there and as soon as you start to write or in my case as soon as you start to type they just keep coming and so they come so fast that you can barely keep up and you don't have to stop you don't want to stop to edit or move your stand around sometimes you don't even bother to correct your typos you can feel them happening as you go along because you just need to get it all written down it's chaos and yet there is order baked into that chaos too because what this glorious introduction to the letter to the Ephesians points to is a purposefulness and an intentionality on the part of God. God chose you in Christ before time began. God redeems you according to God's good pleasure, meaning because God wants to. God adopted you, chose you through Christ, made mysteries known to you in Christ, accomplishes all things in and through Christ. God has made Christ known to you. And so all of this, all of this tumbling and words tripping over each other, too many clauses to parse or count, all of what this passage is telling us, telling us, is that you are loved, you are chosen, and it's all on purpose. It's not just some coincidence, not some happy accident that God loves you in and through Christ Jesus. It's all a part of the plan from the beginning of time. There is a certain amount of relief that comes from hearing that there may be, in fact, order swirling around in the midst of all of the chaos. Because right now, it feels like the chaos has the upper hand in our world. We are emerging from a chaotic year of, of shutdowns and quarantines and uncertain futures. And even now, as we sort of come forth blinking into the light of what we are fervently hoping and praying and wishing is a post-pandemic world, now all of a sudden we're hearing news of variants and Europe is on fire again and we wonder if that light at the end of the tunnel is as close as we thought it was. To our earth itself, the world we inhabit, feels like it's beset with chaos. I mean, the Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico was literally on fire for a while, and there have been deadly heat waves in parts of the country that normally experience kind of like mild and moderate temperatures and weather. There have been earthquakes and, and flooding in the subways and fire tornadoes. I saw that one too this week. And that is just talking mainly about North America. Look around the globe, and there's even more chaos that's looming. And two, those two are just the more tangible faces of chaos that I can name for you, the stuff that we can see with our eyes. There's more out there, too. I mean, that, that deep sense of division that feels more and more like it's about to bubble up and spill over into something more than just shouting matches on TV news or arguments on social media. There is a sense of yearning among so many people for a normalcy that may never come again, while at the same time we're all kind of trying to figure out what the so-called new normal is going to look like, and it's just too much unknown, too much chaos. Our world at times feels as dark as that reading from the Gospel of Mark today, filled with violence and gore and injustice and sorrow. And even that doesn't cover the daily chaos we all experience from messy living rooms to crowded schedules to Pastor Jen yet again kicking her water over before the beginning of the service and everybody having to scramble and get towels to clean it up. And to all of us trying to make up for what we feel is lost time due to the pandemic year. There's just chaos everywhere. And at times it all can feel like so much. Life kind of feels like that picture I showed you, like that diagram of Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, a bunch of lines and squiggles running off in all directions, swirling and whirling and never, ever stopping to rest. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one whose voice spoke over the waters of chaos back in the beginning and drew out of that chaos order, day and night and seasons and sunrises and sunsets. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who created a people, beginning with an, a childless elderly couple, Abraham and Sarah, created a people where no people should have begun. Blessed be God who then brought those people out of slavery and into freedom. Blessed be God who held on to that people even when they tried to walk away time and time again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who sent the Son to save us all, to pave the way for our adoption into the riches of God's grace and mercy. Blessed be God who did all of this out of love for you, for me, and for this beautiful and at times awful created world of which we are a part. Blessed be God who brings order to the chaos, who is the order that we cling to when we are surrounded by chaos. God whose love for you always holds true, even when you, when I, even when we are not holy and blameless. That is the order that we can cling to, even when the world is crumbling around us, whether literally or figuratively. That is the promise that spills forth in this magnificent opening to the letter to the Ephesians that tells us over and over, you are chosen on purpose. You are adopted into God's family. You are given insight into God's wisdom, a relationship with Christ Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life. You are given all of this simply because God wants you. God wants you to be a part of this orderly, chaotic kingdom of grace that God is bringing about in Jesus and through Jesus' followers. This world is a confusing place. I feel like it has always been that way, even if it's confusing in different ways. And this world is a chaotic place. Likewise, it's always been that way too. And yet there's order in the midst of the chaos. We see that even in the way God created the universe to move about in an orderly fashion. Planets in their orbits, the sun rises and the sun sets, the seasons change with regularity, flowers bloom and grow and then fade back to the earth. Time passes by. Even if between the sunrise and the sunset, kingdoms are rising and falling and the earth is quaking and so on, the sun does still, still set and a new day always awaits. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the rock on whom we can place our trust and our hope now and forever. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us then live to praise God's glory. Amen. Shadow deals are made The heartless ones do
let us now give expression to our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with our offering and anthem. Again, thank you to all of you who have continued to support the mission and ministry here at Christus. You are always able to give online by going to our website and clicking on the Give tab or button. Uh, otherwise, you can also mail your donations directly to the church. So again, thank you to all of you. Um, your help enables us to continue spreading the good news to our community. And now, our anthem, Faith of Our Fathers, Corey Christensen on handbells. Thank you, Corey. We continue now with the prayers of the people. 
Bless your holy people, Lord, the people you call your church. Give us your grace, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, so that by our witness all might praise your glory. God, please bless the earth, moderate the intense heat, give shade and breezes to all, and send necessary rain to nourish the crops. Preserve all farm laborers as they work each day under the sun. God, please bless the leaders of nations. Crush the might of tyrants. Train those in power to care for all the oppressed in their land. Lead wealthier countries to share the COVID vaccine with poorer nations. Protect whistleblowers and journalists and form us into persons without prejudice against others. God, bless all who live without power or status. Free the poor, especially the youth, from every form of enslavement. Grant security and self-determination to indigenous peoples around the world. Bless all who are sick or suffering. Comfort the survivors of disaster or gun violence. Protect us from the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Visit all who are imprisoned. Accompany all persons who are facing capital punishment. Receive our prayers this day also for Audrey, Pete and Nancy, Ward and Beth, Phyllis and Chuck, Luis and his family, Verna, Trina, Jack and Walt, Nathan, Janet, Joanne, Dolores and Angie, Al and family, Sandy and Bob, Anna, Ashley, Ian, Trey and Jackie, Helen and Kathy, Grandpa Lee, Wendy and family, Rachel, Lori, Shirley, Diane M, Diane D, Tom, Rebecca, Molly's family, Riley's family, Dawn, and all those we name before you now. God, please help them all to feel your loving and healing embrace. God, please bless each of us that throughout this week may, we may pray and work in your name. Watch over the youth and adults going on the mission trip this week. Bless their travel, their work, their play, and their time together so that your love is freely shared and made known to all. Now receive these prayers, merciful God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues with the celebration of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please share communion with one another using these words and remembering that this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. 
And now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our mini mission trip commissioning, and I'll bring Christine on here. All right, I'm very excited that we can actually do some kind of mission trip. It's not our normal week long, but it is um, something this year. It's been long overdue that we can do this. We're gonna be traveling to one of our Crossway camps, which is part of the ELCA, and in Waypost, or the Waypost is what it's called, it's in Hatley, Wisconsin, about a little over an hour away. And right now we have 24 of us going, and we will be doing some painting on their lodge, outside on their lodge, and we're doing, we'll be doing some trail restoration out on the trails. So it's pretty exciting. So thank you for all who have decided to join us. As you can see, the names are all listed on the screen, so keep them in your hearts as we pray this prayer together. Friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessing as we send these youth and adults on a mission trip to Waypost Camp in Hatley, Wisconsin. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory and all creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you've given us. Renew us in the commitment to use our gift in the service of others and especially of those who are in need. Let us be your hands to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary and the outcast, welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving neighbors to all people. Bless those who go out from here to labor in your name. Prosper the work of their hands. Bless those who receive them and the fruits of their labor, and may those who are sent receive blessing in return. May the gifts they use and share be signs of your love to all people. To you, O God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. God bless you as you go on your way, and we can't wait to hear your stories when you return.
peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you all again for worshiping with us. Come and worship with Christus often. Have a wonderful week.